Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the time of year where we have guests over, our kids are home from school, we're enjoying lots of good holiday food and spending a lot of time in the kitchen. So the way that I'm going to ensure that I can enjoy this week and this time of year is by prepping my fridge, prepping some food. We are going to be doing a lot of things today. I'm going to be sharing some cleaning motivation as well as some homemaking inspiration. And I'm also gonna be sharing lots of yummy new recipes. So we have a lot to get done. Let's jump into it. I don't know about you guys, but for me, I feel like I have been falling so far behind this holiday season. And I feel like I've been trying to do a lot of things that will help me stay on task and stay on track with everything, but it's just not been working. Plus it doesn't really help that we've been in and out of town and just had a lot of personal things going on anyway. But one thing that I don't want to happen is for the holiday season to slip by. As you guys all know, it goes by so, so quickly. And if we're not really, really intentional with everything, we will blink and it will be January and the holidays will be past us. Now I'm really excited for the new year and all that stuff, but I just don't want to miss out on all those special moments. So I want to really focus on things like we're doing today, just whenever I have the time to go ahead and make some shortcuts, do some things that my future self will thank me for later. So that is exactly what we're doing today. We are going to be prepping some produce. We are going to be making lots of recipes that I can store in the fridge and just grab to make the weeknights a lot easier. And even throughout the day, just make things go a lot more productively because we're not having to spend a lot of time in the kitchen all throughout the week. I'm just gonna kind of get it all done at once. And this is just one little step, but this will make a big difference in how much time I have to actually dedicate to making holiday memories with the kids and just doing things that we actually enjoy. So I could find strength to divide us. Give it all we got and I know we did the best we could. If I could go back under the mess, I would memorize your face before I go. But this is how we grow. I know I've mentioned this so many times, but every time I will show our black silverware on my videos, you guys always ask, one, where we got it from, and two, how we like them and how they've held up over the years. So we have had them since we lived in our Utah home. So I think about two or maybe coming on three years, we've had our black silverware and we have loved it. It's held up really, really well. And I have them linked down in my Amazon favorites. That is always linked down below. So if you're ever seeing anything in our home, a lot of times it might be from Amazon and I'll have that link there. And if it's not linked there, then there's a good chance that it's over on my like to know page. But as always, if you see something in our home that you love, that you want to check out, let me know in the comments and I'm more than happy to let you know where we got it from and share a link if we have one. I don't know how many times I've told you guys, oh, okay, we're about to do our kitchen. We're going to be renovating our kitchen in the next month or two or the next few months. 
and that's always the intention but kyle and i have talked so many times and we're really planning on doing it and then of course life happens something else comes up that kind of takes that time and that budget so right now our plan is to do our kitchen in the early springtime however something else is kind of coming up we're not exactly sure which way we're gonna go if we're going to tackle our kitchen next or if we're going to work on this other project but i do feel like if the kitchen gets bumped again then i'm gonna go ahead and just start diying some things in here we are not gonna diy our counters or anything but pretty much everything else i think we can kind of do ourselves and that would definitely lower the budget and just make it a lot more attainable for us and one of the very first things that i would want to do is get rid of the sink i don't know about you guys but i just love the single basin sinks that is definitely the way to go for me i just feel like they're so much more functional especially because we do have a dishwasher that washes our dishes every day and so usually the things that i'm washing in here are larger bulkier items like pots and pans big mixing bowls we've had the single basin sinks in our last few houses and we have loved them so even if the kitchen gets bumped once again which would not shock me because you know life i'm definitely going to be working towards getting a single basin sink and then just starting to diy my way through the kitchen but who knows we'll see what happens So this little cloth right here is a Swedish dish cloth or Swedish dish towel. I actually had some a few years ago and then somehow I kind of forgot about them but I saw them on Amazon recently and I ended up ordering a set and I've been loving them. They've really been cutting down on our paper towel usage, which is awesome. And it's great because you can actually like wipe the counters with them. You can of course use them to absorb a bunch of water or whatever messes you have going on. And then I just like to pop them in my dishwasher to wash them and sanitize them and then just continue reusing them day after day. This seems like a good time to pause because we have everything all nice and tidied up. I'm gonna let the dishes dry for a minute, but my Walmart grocery delivery just arrived. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that from the front door and then I'll share a quick little grocery haul and we'll get to cooking. So this is not like a full-on grocery haul. We have a lot of stuff in our fridge, but I mostly needed a little bit of produce and then a few things like for pantry items, but in no particular order. I got some strawberries for snacking, watermelons. I got some fresh cranberries. This is going to be for my cranberry chicken that I'll make today. I got some red potatoes and these are just gonna be for roasting for dinner tonight. Then I also got some Brussels sprouts. This is for a super yummy recipe I'll share today. Pickling cucumbers. I just started getting pickling ones because because they are like the best deal and I just eat those with hot sauce. And then I picked up some fresh garlic that's already peeled. This stuff is awesome. I also got bananas for snacking on. These salad kits have become like one of my favorite things lately. This one is my favorite right now. I love the dressing and just all the flavors and the cranberries. And then I got some for Kyle. This is like an everything chop salad kit and a bacon ranch crunch. So we'll have these for lunches sometimes. Then I also got some eggs, the chickens for today. I got some pineapple for prep and putting that in the fridge for snacking. Then I also got some white wine vinegar. That's going to be for a recipe today. I got some light brown sugar because we're all out. Some fresh rosemary that's going to go with the chicken. Some almond extract for some cookies I'm making today. And then some salsa. I love adding this in our taco meat. It just makes it taste so much better. And then also I got some grits. We were just all out. Then these are like a soda that I drink. They have prebiotics in them. So if I'm wanting a soda or something sweet I can grab one of these then I also got just some dark chocolate this is just going to be for a drizzle on the cookies and the kids were asking for these so I got some sandwich cookies these scissors are the Drew Barrymore ones I got this it's like an electric kettle it's super super pretty it heats up water so so fast and I just honestly love the whole line of her stuff like I kind of wish we didn't have a toaster so I could get a toaster from her but anyway we were in need of some scissors so I picked these up and then these are probably going to be for Christmas for the boys 
they were just some harmonicas. I think they were like $3 each and I thought they will think that's so fun. So I picked up a few of those and then that is everything that I got from Walmart. I know I talk about Walmart delivery all the time. We've been doing this for months and months and months and it just saves me so much more time. I'm like way more intentional with my grocery shopping because I'm not being tempted and I'm like going through the aisles. I think I have a link that will give you like $20 off or $10 off your first order. This is not sponsored or anything, but I will have that in the description box. Seriously, you guys, it's incredible. It shows up right to your door. And like I ordered this late last night at like midnight. It's been like a game changer for me, but I'm gonna go ahead and get some of these things put away and then we will tackle the dreaded fridge that is full of lots of things right now actually but it's just been a really busy week with the holidays and everything so i'm gonna get that cleared out Let me know in the comments how often do you grocery shop. A few years ago, I had like the best routine going and I grocery shopped every single Monday, week after week. And it was just so nice to have that routine. But as you guys know, a lot of my routines have kind of been up in the air, kind of getting moved around, switched up. And so at this point, I don't really have like a grocery shopping routine other than I always use Walmart delivery. But I do usually order our groceries every one to one and a half weeks. And whenever we order groceries, I like to prep out as much as I can, whether it's making full-on recipes or whether it's just prepping out some produce I like to have some things that are just grab and go and convenient in the fridge here I'm just starting to pull everything out I'm literally gonna pull every single thing out of the fridge and I've shared in the past how I don't feel like you have to do this every week or anything I definitely couldn't even tell you guys that because I for sure don't do this every week but sometimes you can go through your fridge just like one shelf at a time and it's a lot more attainable but every so often I do like to just pull everything out like this and get in all of those little nooks and crannies and give it a really nice deep clean. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And as I'm pulling everything out, I am just kind of sorting it into piles when I set it down, which I will talk about in just a minute. But once I get everything emptied out, I'm just taking my e-cloths and wiping everything down. And as you can tell, this fridge definitely needed some love. When the tide is Once I got all of the shelves wiped down, I just started taking out all of the drawers and little bins that we have in our fridge, just because those tend to get really dirty and they get cleaned up a lot easier when you actually take them out and wash them in the sink, but the shelves were not terribly dirty. And so I was able to just easily wipe those down in the fridge. All right, we are going to start placing things back in the fridge and getting that organized. But I'm gonna go ahead and go through everything and see like what's expired, what's not good anymore, and then everything else we'll put back in the fridge. So over here, I have my produce that I'm going to be prepping today and putting back in the fridge. Here is just these drawers. This is just the easiest way to take them out. Here I have like mostly condiments and like pickles and all that kind of stuff. I still have my salad kits. So I kind of have like everything right here. And then up here is like all of our leftovers. I'll go through all of this. Anything that's gone bad, we'll go ahead and put that in the dishwasher. And then everything else will start sticking in the fridge. And then over there on that side, side that is all what I'm going to be using like for recipes today so I didn't bother I won't bother like putting this 
away or anything? Several months ago, we got this fridge. It's used, but we found it on Facebook Marketplace and I've really loved the fridge, but I feel like I need to reorganize it because I don't think that it's working as good as it could be working for us. So I'm gonna be like kind of reorganizing the shelves and just making sure that we are really utilizing the space very well. So it'll be a little tetris -y for a while, but it'll be good. I hate finding expired food that we didn't get to in the fridge and I feel like a lot of times I just don't even want to face it because I don't want to feel bad that we didn't use food or that it went to waste without us noticing but that mentality definitely makes the situation worse because it makes your fridge feel a lot more crowded and less functional because there's just way too much stuff in there and you're not going to get around to using all of it. So do as I say, not as I've done. And I would urge you to do what I am doing today and not push past that problem and just pull it all out, make it functional, wipe it down instead of just avoiding the problem. It's going to make life so much easier when you take everything out and just make sure that everything in there is actually serving you. I feel like this happens a lot where we just have these areas where we don't really want to deal with them, but it never fails that it makes the situation way worse when we avoid them. So tackle your fridge, tackle your closet, whatever area you're avoiding, go ahead and get it done and you will be so happy that you did. First recipe that we are going to do is cranberry chicken. This is actually one that I found online. So I will have the recipe card, but I'll also have like the website that I found it on. We're also gonna make salmon tonight for our dinner, but Kyle is not a huge fish fan. In fact, he really doesn't like it at all. So I'm gonna make salmon for the rest of the family and I'll just pull out one of the chickens that we're making right now for him to have for dinner. But the rest of this is just going to actually go into the fridge for kind of like food prep throughout the week. But let's go ahead and make this chicken. So for this recipe, you're gonna need two cups of fresh cranberries, a third cup of brown sugar, two to three tablespoons of white wine vinegar, some chicken breast, then six to eight cloves of garlic. You guys know I measure garlic with my heart so I just plop a bunch in there. You can never have too much garlic. And then salt and pepper, one and a half tablespoons of chopped fresh rosemary, or you can use dried rosemary. You just use one and a half teaspoons of dried rosemary because you'd never want to use as much. One teaspoon of sweet paprika, one third cup of olive oil, the juice of one lemon, one large onion, three celery stalks, half a cup of chicken broth or water, and then you can also garnish with fresh rosemary. Okay, so to start, we are going to combine cranberries, brown sugar, and white wine vinegar, and then set that aside. If you have extra cranberries on hand that you're not gonna use, you can actually just pop them in the freezer and then add them into your water and they're like perfect little ice cubes and they just give like a little bit of taste to your water. So that's probably what I'm gonna do with the rest of these. So we're gonna set this aside and then I'm just gonna start prepping all the produce. I'm gonna chop everything up and then we'll start like kind of assembling things. Thank you. 
Once you have your chicken laid out, go ahead and rub that minced garlic on the top. And like you guys know, I do not really measure garlic. I think that's one thing that you can't really have too much of. And so I just put a ton on there. And then of course you want to salt and pepper your chicken. And then next in a small little bowl, you're going to add in all of your rosemary and your paprika. And you can use dried rosemary or you can use fresh rosemary like I'm doing here. I would just suggest that if you're using fresh rosemary to go ahead and cut it up so that you're not getting like those big bites of rosemary. Next, in a large bowl, we are going to add olive oil, lemon juice, and the white wine vinegar. And then we're gonna put all of the onion and celery and also the lemon halves into the bowl and give that a good mix. And then we're going to brown it on the stove for just a minute and then we will go ahead and pop it in the oven, which I have preheating to 425 degrees. I did want to mention if you don't like cranberries still do not shy away from this recipe Kyle honestly does not like cranberries at all he is not a fan and he loves this chicken so if you don't eat the cranberries with the chicken and you just taste all the flavors you really don't even notice it it's really not an overpowering taste at all definitely try it out no matter if you like cranberries or not Now that we have all the chicken all prepped, we are going to let this sit for about 15 minutes, let it marinate, let it get all those flavors going. And while it is marinating, I'm actually gonna chop up whatever veggies I have, and we're gonna roast a ton of veggies, and then we can eat on those throughout the week. They are so yummy. I'm gonna add some peppers, I have some sweet potatoes, some potatoes, some asparagus. I don't think I have broccoli right now, but I'm just gonna go through and get whatever can be yummy and roasted and roasted up in the oven. So right here, you'll notice I'm tossing some things into this little bowl. This can be used as either a garbage bowl to put all of your garbage in as you're cooking, or it can be used as like a veggie scraps bowl. That's typically what I love to do. I will take all of my veggie scraps from cooking, and a lot of times I'll put it in this little bowl and then I'll transfer it into a freezer bag, pop it in your freezer, and just continue adding to it over time. And eventually you will have enough to make homemade veggie stock. You can even make this in the slow cooker. It's so super easy, and it's also helping not waste all of those extra little veggie scraps that normally would just be going to the trash. Okay, a lot of times when I'm making these veggie bakes, sometimes I'll do just the vegetables. I'll just do a little oil and then some seasonings. But my favorite way is to add some kind of like sausage or bacon or something like that in it. And it just, the oils from the meat season it all. It just tastes so, so good. It's so extra. So today I do have some uncured turkey bacon. So we're just gonna chop this up, put it right in there raw and it will cook up in the oven. I do prefer to use like turkey bacon, but you can omit that or you can really use whatever. I've used sausage, just whatever you have, and it's incredible.
Here I'm adding just a little bit of oil since the turkey bacon is pretty lean. Then of course I'm adding in some minced garlic along with some hand crushed rosemary and salt and pepper. You can use whatever seasonings you love that you think would go well with your veggies. This is just kind of like my basic mix that I don't think you can really go wrong with. And then you'll see I'm going to give this a nice good mix. Pop it onto my baking sheet, add all of the turkey bacon on top, and then add any additional seasoning that you want to the top. We are gonna pop this in a 425 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes or until everything is work tender. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes, so that chicken has been marinating for long enough. We are just going to take a pan, go ahead and kind of brown them a little bit, and then we're gonna pop them in the oven with all of the yumminess that we've added in. Once you've browned your chicken, you're just going to want to deglaze your pan with a little bit of water or chicken stock. That will get all of those tasty brown bits out of the bottom of your pan and into your chicken dish. Then you're going to add your chicken along with all of the rest of the veggies, along with your marinated cranberries right on top of your chicken into a 9 by 13 casserole dish. Okay. While everything is cooking in the oven, we are going to make some yummy cookies. They're called almond snowball cookies. They're no bake. They also have like pretty minimal ingredients and they are so, so yummy. So we're going to grab all the ingredients we need and start making those. They're the beautiful brand from the brand. They are beautiful. They're like so great. So literally you're just going to add every single ingredient into the bowl and just give that a good mix until it's all well combined. So once you get everything all mixed up, you might have to add just like a tablespoon or two of water, just enough so that you can like clump it together and it'll stay. Next, we are going to grab that dark chocolate that I have. I'm gonna melt a little bit. You could use like chocolate chips or melting wafers or whatever, but I just grabbed some dark chocolate and I'm gonna melt this in the microwave and then I'm just gonna drizzle them right over top of these little cookies. And then I'm actually gonna set them in the fridge just to let them set up a little bit. And then once they're set up, I'll put them in a container and the cookies will be done. There 
are definitely other ways to melt your chocolate, but a microwave works just fine. I'm just popping this in for 30 second increments and then stirring occasionally. Bring me something new. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, I'm over in the kitchen cooking and I look over and see this. Emma, are you waiting so patiently <laughs> for food? You ready? Emma, do you want some? Okay. All right, now that the food prep is done, I want to prep out some fruit and veggies to snack on throughout the week. These are also really nice to have prepared for school lunches for the boys, but no matter whether we're having them for snacks, for lunches, even just adding on to dinner or whatever, it's so nice to have them all prepped out. And a super side note with pineapple, if you have a high speed blender, you can actually core the pineapple and then take the pineapple cores and add them to your smoothies and they will blend up beautifully. And it's just another way to help stretch your produce and not waste as much. How could they say you made me come undone? Now I know that it's okay. Unlike my friends, you are nothing like them. How could they say I was broken? All right, I started on the prep. I still have more to do. Veggies are all taken out of the oven and they're finished roasting. The chicken is out. Oh my gosh, you guys, so delicious. You're gonna love this one. Before I continue on with all of the rest of the produce, we need to go pick up the boys and then I'll come back and we can get back to it. Stuck in reverse somehow. But it ain't no one's fault that I am stuck here. 
Got to catch up. <laughs> Gazing at the blue of the night. Stars are filling up the sky. You take my hand in yours. We'll make our own constellations. It is so tempting to grab a ton of convenience foods like chips and crackers and whatever. And I'm definitely not saying that our house doesn't have those because we absolutely do. However, I really try to make healthy food options into convenient food options by doing things like this. I don't just prep out a bunch of meals. Instead, I also like to prep out snack foods. So I like to have some fruit in the fridge. I like to have veggies prepped out in the fridge. And then there really is just no excuse to not grab something healthy when you're hungry throughout the day. I'm all done prepping everything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put these into Tupperware containers. And then we do have like about an hour before I'll start cooking dinner. Once I get these put away, I will meet you guys back here for some dinner. got a little <laughs> behind on time, but this won't take long. So I'm just gonna preheat the oven to 400 degrees. The salmon is super simple. It's like olive oil, garlic, oregano, lemon slices. So for this salmon, you're going to leave the skin on, put the skin side down over some parchment paper, and then just go ahead and drizzle on some olive oil and I like to sprinkle salt and pepper on this along with some dried oregano. I love that Noah loves to come in the kitchen and help me. He is always our little cook. Honestly, all the boys will come in and help a lot, but Noah, I feel, is like our little cook. He is the one that will pretty much never ever say no to coming in the kitchen with me. But anyway, once you have everything all seasoned, you're just going to slice up a lemon and then lay the lemon slices on top. And I did forget this at first, but in a minute you'll see me add some minced garlic on top and that is just going to give it another level of flavor. Okay, the bacon Brussels sprouts that we're gonna have as a side dish tonight is one of the easiest side dishes ever. So all you're going to need is Brussels sprouts, maybe like half a pack of bacon if you wanna be like very liberal with bacon, but you could also just do like maybe two or three slices. And then I'm gonna add in some garlic just to get a little extra flavor out of that. You're going to start by cutting off the bottom piece because this is going to be a little bitter. And you wanna do that to every single one. And if it's a larger Brussels sprout, I like to cut it in half just so it's a little bit easier to eat. So this is just regular bacon. All I'm gonna do is just slice it up. Is 
So like I said, you do not have to do this much bacon. Usually I only buy bacon if I have like a recipe for it or if I'm gonna do something like that with it. I don't know, I've never had any complaints when I put an extra bacon. So while this is starting to cook down a little bit, the oven just beep and put this in the oven for 10 minutes or until the salmon is nice and flaky. All right, now that the bacon has cooked up a little bit, but it still has more to go, we're gonna go ahead and add in all of the Brussels sprouts. And then once this is cooked down quite a bit more, we're going to add in some garlic, but not quite yet. This is yet again another dinner that looks like you put way more effort in than you did. It looks like you spent a lot of time on this one and as you guys saw, you really just don't spend much time at all. I started cooking the salmon and Brussels sprouts and within 20 minutes, we were ready to start eating. I love the look of fancy meals. I love how it makes everyone, you know, ooh and ah about it. But if they are not simple and fairly quick, it's just not something that I'm realistically going to make regularly. So here I'm just using one of those chopped salad kits that you saw in the grocery haul earlier. This is one that my family loves because it has a ranch dressing. So it's a little bit more traditional in that way but it also has a lot of flavor it kind of tastes like the everything but the bagel seasoning and for dinner on this night we had the salmon Kyle and the boys actually had some of that yummy chicken we had the salad with it and then those super tasty brussels sprouts and it just all tasted so incredible so i feel like even though we spent most of the day in the kitchen we got a lot done we got everything nice and clean we of course cleaned out our fridge which you guys remember totally needed it it needed to be cleaned out really badly and it also needed to be reorganized and it's been functioning way better for our family now that i have the shelves in different orders and just kind of placing things differently in there of course we got lots of recipes done we got that super juicy and flavorful cranberry chicken made we we got the roasted veggies that we can continue snacking on throughout the week. We also have those tasty almond snowball cookies. Those are so yummy and I'm just always blown away by how quick and simple they are. And we also got that salmon made. Now this is just going to be for a dinner for tonight, but as you saw, you can make that salmon happen so quickly. Of course, those super tasty bacon Brussels sprouts that have the smokiness of the bacon and the crispiness from frying the Brussels sprouts, they are just such a home run. Let me know in the comments which of these recipes are you going to be trying first? If I can suggest one, I would definitely suggest that chicken. It is just so juicy and so flavorful. You guys are going to love that one. And if you are needing more recipes, I'm going to link my homemaking playlist right here on the side of the screen. You guys will find tons of different recipes in there from the last several years. And also I have everything linked over on my website, which is of course in the description box. So lots of different recipes that you can find on my channel. Thank you guys so much for being here and I cannot wait to to see you in the next one. Bye guys.